Good afternoon, guys. Um, well, first of all, if I'm coming back to Morristown Beard ever as a student, I want to come back as James Cunningham, because he seemed to be really liked here. So. Um, and if I don't have a lot of energy today, I do apologize. Part of coming back to Morristown Beard got my juices flowing and thinking, well, maybe I should see some of my old Morristown Beard friends. For those of you who know where Sammy's is, uh, we went to Sammy's last night and closed it down, so it was a slightly rough one. But, you know, I'll try to work my way through that. Um, a lot of garlic pasta, so if you don't get too close, you probably, anyway. Um, it really is amazing being back. It was amazing touring the campus today. Um, the thing that I actually loved most about the tour that I got today was that Mars and Beard has definitely changed and evolved, including the theater we're in today was not here. Uh, a lot of the buildings were not here. A lot of the things that you guys now have access to were not here um, when, I, when I was here, when I went here. Um, but the feel, like, to me, felt the same. And that was, for me, my Mars Sound Beard experience, which was so, like, the thing that was so amazing about my Mars Sound Beard experience was the feel of just, like, being here, walking around. Like, we were laughing last night about, we played hacky sack, which is, I, probably no one's doing that anymore, but. Um, but, you know, it was, like, that, that sort of free-range feel of being sort of in school, being responsible, but also being able to sort of have that, you know, walk around the quad and all, and all that stuff. And so it was really exciting for me to come back and, 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 and again, get that, get that feel back again and see that it's still happening. Um, because I think that is what's special about this place. I think this place has done a lot of special things for a lot of kids and, you know, a lot of the friends that I've had have done, you know, great things from here. And I think, I think a lot of that comes from that feel. And, uh, and, I, and I will say, you know, Mr. Mr. Timmick, I did get to see today. I don't know where he is right now. Is he... I have like super bright lights on me. There he is, all the way in the back. Um, you know, he was a he was a really special teacher for us. Um, you know, he uh, like you know he I was a you know I was not the best student probably when I came here, um, which may be an understatement. I'm not sure how I got in, but um, but you know I, I I I came here sort of I'd say with like, like passionless. Um, and, you know, but my, but my passion was in building stuff. I mean, it's, it's what I like to do. And, you know, through his class and, and other classes here, but he was one of the teachers that really, you know, helped fuel that passion of building and taught me a lot about engineering. And things that I learned in that class, literally, I, I remember being in China when I was building my first doorbell, uh, which was called Doorbot at the time, and doing stuff with engineering, and like, you know, going back to some of those fundamentals of what I learned here. And I think, again, I think it's an amazing experience for high school. So, you know, Mars Sound Beard really did. It really helped me, um, you know, it gave me some of the basics, and it, it gave me the passion. I learned, I learned what I, like, what I love doing here, and, and, it, and it fueled that passion so that when I left here, I kind of took that with me, and, and I hope, you know, the seniors, this is your last day today. Um, you're probably not even listening right now. You're just like, you're completely zoned out thinking about whatever you're gonna do tonight, which I hope is great. Um, but, and safe, be safe, everyone. But, but, um, but, but I mean, I, I hope you take that passion with you because I think that, you know, in life we can all, we can all learn, we can all, you know, go to school, there's lots of schools, you're gonna go to lots of great colleges and you're gonna learn the things you need to learn, the fundamentals. But the things that like really matter as you get out there are gonna be those passions. The thing that really sort of like, that makes you tick, the thing that makes you want to succeed, the thing that makes you wanna go. Um, you know, with Ring, the, the biggest innovation we had at Ring, and people always see the doorbell and think that that was our innovation. Our innovation was actually, uh, the, the invention I had was our mission, was to reduce crime in neighborhoods. And that became our passion. That was like, you know, it was something that was great to be behind. We could invent around it. We could design around it. Our customers could get excited about it. Our, our team could get excited about it. I was excited about it. And that's what really helped it grow because we weren't just another product on the market trying to sell stuff to people to make money. We were something that was trying to make a difference. And, and I do really see, I think a lot of that, um, you know, that creativity and invention that I brought into that. I think a lot of that really did come from things like Mara Sound Beard and from people like Mr. Timmick who, who helped me get there. So I'd love to open up for questions because I can just keep talking um, with my garlic breath. But, um, but if there's questions of things, I'm happy to kind of answer anything across the board and uh, would love to just kind of have a little bit of a chat. So, yep. 
Why doorbells? Turns out they're really good. Um, <laughs> I do remember when I started, when I started the business, um, I said to someone, I'm like, you know, they're like, what do you do? And I said, I, I, uh, I'm making a doorbell. And they just started laughing. And I'm like, no, no, I'm really making a doorbell. And they're like, that'll be, that'll be good. It turned out to be really good. So I was actually in, I, <laughs> turned out OK. Um, I was actually in my um, garage working. I was trying to invent stuff. Like I was literally like building things. So I was building a thing called Snap Gardening, which is a modular gardening system that never worked. Um, I was doing some other stuff, and I couldn't hear the doorbell. And this was in 2011, so it was just kind of when smartphones were kind of becoming more and more so like sort of out there. And I thought to myself, like, there must be a doorbell that goes to your phone, because I keep missing the people at the door. And I just looked online, there wasn't. And then I'm like, oh, I'm just going to build one. And so I just started soldering and taking stuff. You know, I bought a Wi-Fi camera, and I just got to put this whole thing together. And this big, ugly, like, I mean, it was a gigantic thing on my door. And, you know, my wife, instead of, like, you know, sort of throwing me out of the house for doing this to the front door, this, like, huge thing, said that it made, made her feel safer at home because now she could see who was at the front door, and she loved that. And that, again, that was, and that was actually, so it was, it was like my wife saying that, that I was like, oh, you know what? Like, this thing could actually reduce, like, this thing could stop crime by, by acting like you're home. And that was, again, like, that, that was kind of like what got the wheels turning and, and what got the doorbell going and sort of everything kind of kept kind of going from there, so. First reaction when Amazon, so these are the kind of stories you want to hear like this, like, like, it's like people always say like, what was that magic moment when you knew you had it when you invented this? And it's like, I d never had that moment. Um, Amazon, we had been working with them. So we had been working with them for about four years and got kind of like, so it took, a re like the, the best way to sell your company to Amazon is to work with them a really long time. Like there's no like, you know, like quick sort of snap way to do it. And so it turned out like we worked with them for a really long time and one day, the, like, one of the people I knew there flew down and had lunch, which was like, you know, we, we talked a lot, so it wasn't that out of place. And he said, I think it's time. And I'm like, like, time? And he's like, I think we should do this. And I'm like, can we just, I just want to make sure I'm talking about the same thing. Because I'm, I'm going to, like, super embarrass myself right now. I'll be like, yes, let's do it. And he's like, do what? Like, like what are you talking Like, time to pay for lunch. Like, so... You know, so, and they literally said, like, I think it's time to come together. I said, absolutely. So Amazon, for me, again, we were a very mission-focused company. They really believed in what we were doing as a company. Like, they, from the top down, always had really been supportive of the mission at Ring, not just, like, the products. And so I knew that they would be, or I felt they would be a good place for us to go to. And it, it turned out they really were. They really have been, you know, from, from Jeff sort of all the way down, like super supportive of what we're doing and what we're trying to do for the world and like all the different products that we're doing. So it's been a really amazing thing. What did I build with Mr. Timmick? So I actually saw pictures of it today. Um, we did, uh, at that point, it was like, you know, you, I, I don't think at that point they were doing anything other than houses, if I remember, but my memory is a little foggy as I go back. Um, and so I built this house. And the funny thing was, Mr. Timmick and I had like, these arguments because I wanted to have cedar shingles on my house. Um, like when I drive by rich people's houses, they had cedar shingles, and I wanted cedar shingles on my little model house. And at the time, like, there was no way to do it except to literally cut like 10,000 shingles, which Mr. Timmick is like, you'll never finish this project. And I was like, like not only will I finish the project, but I'm going to cut like 10,000. And I cut like literally 10,000 pieces of balsa wood that looked like shingles and with an X-Acto knife glued them onto the roof. Um, I, it was, I don't know what, I mean, like, I guess I didn't have a lot of friends, so I, 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 I just had to like, soak up time doing something else in my house, but yeah, so that's, that's what I built. And I really was, I was I, but I loved building and I was so proud, I, like, still to this day, I'm so proud of that project. Like, it was something that was so meaningful. So the idea of Ring to becoming a business, um, it's kind of a, that's a really good, like, a interesting question. Um, you know, we started, I, I, so again, this is where it wasn't like an aha moment. So I, I, I built it for myself in the garage so that I could like see who was there while I'm trying to do this gardening thing. And I really at that time did not think, I wasn't thinking like, oh, this is you know, going to be the next biggest thing. It was like, this fixed my problem, but like no one else has this problem. And then my wife said that and it was like, oh, that's, that's interesting and like started thinking more about it. And then everyone that would come over, I'd be like, oh, here's a snap gardening. Like, we're trying to do this. And they'd be like, 
wait, what was that doorbell? How'd you answer the phone? Like, how'd you answer the door? And I'm like, oh, it's this thing. And, and so it, be, it, it kind of just slowly grew. And then um, at that time, so this is going into 2012, uh, pre-sale, so Kickstarter, Indiegogo, were just kind of starting to come, like, to happen. Like that, like, that concept didn't exist before. Like, the idea that you could put something on the internet and people would buy it a year before it's even ready, like, off of a rendering, just didn't exist. And so I put it up for pre-sale, and, like, you kind of, I mean, I, I was not focused on it. Again, I wasn't, like, thinking, you know, like, if it just works, we'll be there. And it really started selling well, but even more than selling well is I kept getting contacted by people that, like my wife, were saying the same thing about it. Like, I'm buying this because we live in this place, and the people come, and they knock on the door, and then they rob the house if it's not there, and with this I can be able to tell them I'm there. And so that kind of, like, kept getting the thing going, and, like, it just kept leading, like, one thing kind of keep leading to another. But to build it into, like, a real business took... I mean, I'd say we're still building it today. I mean, it's, it's just it's a journey. I mean, it's, it's, it's like a never-ending journey. Now, obviously, we've had some success, but like, it's, we still have a long way to go. So, so, so how did my role change at Amazon? Um, part of selling to Amazon, what's great about Amazon, is that they have a great history of leaving companies alone and letting like, the founders stay and really build them. So Zappos, uh, still run by Tony Shea. Um, there's Audible, which is like the on, uh, uh, audio books, still run by the same founding team, and it's been there for, I think, over 10 years. So they have this like, history of buying companies like mine and letting us like, still do it, and they've, they've done that with me. So my role actually um, hasn't, it's gotten less stressful, because I don't feel like I'm gonna go to business every day, so that's like a good thing. Um, I have a lot more support, so I have support from like a much bigger team. I mean, Amazon is one of the biggest companies in the world, so now I have like that support system in place. Um, but my really like day to day, like I go to work, I kind of in some ways almost forget that like they own us because it's like we just keep kind of going. And then even my team, like we just kind of don't think about it. It's, 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 it's pretty interesting. Yeah, so for Shark Tank, uh, you know, it was, I mean, again, that was like a, if I go back in time, like being on Shark Tank for me was like, you know, as an entrepreneur, it's like going to the Olympics. Like that was like a big deal. I mean, like it was a big deal to be on Shark Tank. Then to get rejected on Shark Tank in front of like every family, friend, vendor, mem anyone you know, pretty embarrassing in one side. And we also needed the money, which was tough. Now what makes it better now a little bit is that we're the largest company ever to appear on Shark Tank. So that feels a little better. Um, <laughs> Not that I'm, a very, I'm, you know, not, I'm not trying to keep your score, but, um, but yeah, no, it was, it was actually really hard because I thought, I really did think we were going to get, I mean, I, I literally went on there being like, Mark Cuban's gonna invest. Like, I'm gonna get Mark Cuban, it's gonna be awesome, Mark's gonna be like my new buddy, and we're gonna build this thing. And, you know, like, like you can't, the show is, it takes about an hour to tape the show, it's like when you're doing this, it's all live, so they don't stop it. But they cut it up, obviously, afterwards. What they don't cut right is that like Mark literally, it's like I go up, I do my pitch, and Mark's like, Jamie, this thing's great, blah, blah, I'm out. And I'm like, <laughs> it's like two minutes in, you know, it's like, okay, like this is done. Um, and then like they just kind of kept dropping out and I kept fighting back, but it was, it was a really hard thing. We needed the money. Um, I left there broke um, and like literally like we just were out. And so it was a tough, thing, what, what was lucky about that, and we still were in a really bad situation, so we filmed in September of 2013, and we started shipping our product December, the first week of December 2013. Now, when you film, they don't tell you if you'll air, so you don't even know if you're going to go on, like, the show, like, you, you actually don't know, like, they, they cut lots of the people that they film because they're just not good, like, they're not fun TV, and so that's, it's a show. Um, so that, you can get cut on that. And then they don't tell you when you'll air. So if, even if you're going to air, they just call you literally, like just random call from a random number comes in. It's like, hi, you know, Michelle from Shark Tank, you're airing next week, thanks, bye. And you're like, but the, you know, like, I, what, what about all the, and like, not, that's it. And so we aired in November of 13. So right before we started shipping, um, we didn't have enough money to pay the factory in China to release the product. And so, <laughs> By airing in November of 13, we got a, we, the sales that came in from people watching the show allowed us to pay the factory to release the product to ship it. So it's pretty like, so luck is also a, a, a part of business. I mean, you know, it, no matter how hard you work, um, if we had aired in May of 
14, like if it had just, which part of the season, I'm not sure if we still would have, you know, been in business at the time. The best advice, I mean, what I, I'd say, so I actually, I, I believe deeply that advice is a, um, is a bad thing. Um, and I say that in the way of advice comes from my situation to your situation without me knowing everything about you. And so when someone's giving you advice, they're coming from like their background, the things that they've had happen. What I'd say is, I think the best thing that you can do in, in life is learn from people. So it's not about, I'm not saying don't listen, like, like, like advice to me, like saying like, do this, that's not my favorite thing. Um, but I think listening to people's situations. And so all, like what I can say is, what I found that helped me make, to really be successful was finding something that I was passionate about doing and that was also good for the world. Um, now, I say the second part because if you do something that benefits others, people want to be part of that. And you can't build a business alone. And so when you have something that you can explain to someone, I'm reducing crime in neighborhoods, I'm doing, like, people get excited. Customers get excited. When customers are excited, they talk to their friends. Your team, you can hire people better because people want to work at something. Hopefully, you'll want to work somewhere where you're doing something that's better than just making money. Because money is a, it's a very bad form of motivation overall. It's very short term. Whereas making people's lives better is very long term. Now you're gonna still need a salary. So don't like, don't leave here and say like, ma, like guy spoke at school today, I'm volunteering. Like don't, like that's not what I'm, not what I'm saying. Like you still need a salary, but try to work on something that you can do. And I think when you start to do that kind of thing, the, the business kind of forms around that. You, you don't have to force it. So what I like to sort of see with entrepreneurs and what I've seen when people are successful is they're not trying to do a business to build a business. They're trying to do something that's better for the world and the business is what makes that even bigger and better. So like the bigger ring gets, the more crime I can reduce. So it is like a cycle. Favorite shark on Shark Tank. So this is gonna be controversial. Um, so it, for those who watch the show, Mr. Wonderful is actually the greatest shark um, and the nicest shark. And here's why. Because when you're on, you know, when you, when you go up to Shark Tank, it's a huge deal for a company and for an entrepreneur. And it's a big, like, it's a lot of work. And you go on there. If everyone just backs out like Mark did and is like, I'm out, there's no TV. Like the, the TV of Shark Tank, like the, the thing that makes the show so exciting is that back and forth. It's that negotiating. It's like you're putting yourself in there. Like, would I take this deal? Would I not take this deal? So if all the sharks just like, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. It's, it's like, it's done and you probably won't get on the air. And that, it does happen. Um, Mr. Wonderful's deals are usually not that good, but they create a back and forth. They create that sort of tension moment. And they're real. I mean, he'll do them if you take it because um, they're usually really bad deals. But so he actually does like a lot for the show and for entrepreneurs. He's, and he's actually like a, he actually is a really nice person I've now spent a lot of time with afterwards. And just, I think it's funny because he's the sort of the anti whatever. He's like the, the, you know, he plays that role well. So what kind of camera did I use when I first started out? That's interesting. So it was a, it was basically like a DIY, like hacker off of the internet, like Linux based camera. So it was like a, like you basically could buy like a kit and I just kind of put it together. It was kind of like a Raspberry Pi, if anyone knows what that is, which is like kind of a developer thing, but it was, it was a, kind of more of a hackery thing, and I just kind of like took it out, took all the pieces apart, um, and then figured out how to solder a button onto it that would click it and sort of make it think it was, it, it actually, the, the click actually made it think it was shorting itself out, and so it, like, it wasn't supposed to have a button, and so it would like basically send you an error, and that error was someone at the door. <laughs> So, <laughs> you, you make it work. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. It's awesome. Good questions.